Hi everyone, this is Maria from Plant In App and I'm really happy to see you back on our channel. Today we have another video for you guys about how to identify plant problems with your plants. So let's get started. You probably noticed that sometimes the leaves can turn yellow or some black or brown spots may appear on them. That's usually the time when you should become the plant doctor for your plants. The ranger house plant problems is quite big, but some are much more widespread than others. In this video you will learn how to diagnose plant problems based on the signs that they give to you, so let's get started. First of all, we need to understand what the correct plant problem diagnosing is. The rules differ a little bit for the indoor and for the outdoor plants. In general, the indoor environment is much more stable and the problems are most of the times caused by the improper plant care. A lot of the times, the problems with indoor plants are due to overwatering, underwatering, improper lighting, and certain types of pests. In case for the outdoor plants, environmental factors come into play. This can be, for example, sudden changes in the weather, birds, weeds, and certain types of insects. This is why a lot of times it is much more difficult to understand what exactly happened to your outdoor plant, as environment is something that you do not have a direct control on. Still, you can correctly identify plant growing problems by asking the right questions and having the right tools. Oftentimes, you can tell what is wrong with your plant by simply observing and looking at it attentively, tracing what was exactly happening to it, and taking the notes of what were the changes in the nearby environment. From the tools, what you may need is a magnifying glass. Now, before hiring up to the plant and examining closely, you should take a wider look at the situation. Here are some of the questions to ask yourself before you start examining the plant in detail. The first question is, what do I actually know about this plant? Well, first of all, you should know the plant name and the species, and secondly is how the plant normally looks like in real life. This is important because some healthy plants can be easily mistaken for a diseased one. For example, there is such thing as variegation and it is not a disease and simply means that plants of the same species can differ a little bit from one another. Here are some of the examples from our own office of the variegation of the plants. For example, snake plant, aloe vera and pothos. They all are a little bit different but still a part of the same plant and healthy. Third, you should know the common pests and diseases of this particular plant. There are some plants that are much more susceptible to certain diseases than others, and knowing all of this information will make your plant disease identification easier. The second question is, what was happening to my plant recently? Did you change the watering schedule? Did you move it to a place with a different lighting? Have you been using a particular fertilizer or maybe stopped using one? Did you recently repot the plant to a different soil or maybe there were some changes into the gardening and the landscape? Try to bring to your mind all of the possible changes that could have happened to the plant in the recent past, as tracing the history will help you to create a clear mental picture of what has happened. Now when you know all of the context and the basic facts about the plants, follow these steps to diagnose plant growing problems. Here is how I would diagnose my plant. There are four important things that you need to pay attention to. Number one is the symptom. The second one is the pattern of the symptom spread, the speed of the progression, and the environmental factors. First of all, observe the plant carefully and look at the symptoms. Most of the symptoms are visible on the leaves and on the stems of the plant. Yellow leaves, curling leaves, leaves with black or brown spots on them, leaves that look like they've been bitten, or the dried out part of the leaves, all of them are signs of the problem. In case of pests, you may be able to find insects or traces of them on the stems or on the leaves of the plant. You should remember that different types of insects leave different types of traces. And make precise notes about any abnormalities that you notice in your plant. The next is to find the pattern in the spread of the symptoms. First of all, you should check whether you find the symptoms on one or many of your plants. If the symptoms appear on many different plant species around the same area, most likely the plant was affected by environmental abiotic factors, such as the weather. If only one plant or several plants that are next to it are affected, the problem is likely biotic. This means pests, diseases, or maybe the fungus are the issue. Next, you should check which part of the plant is affected. If the symptoms are scattered, most likely it's an insect or a disease. 
If only one side of the plant is affected, most likely it is something environmental that caused it. Next thing to note is the speed of the progression. Problems that are caused by environmental factors usually appear quite quickly and do not progress. Symptoms that are caused by insects or diseases usually progress over a long period of time, weeks or even months, and continue to progress until you manage to stop them. Finally, you need to pay attention to the environment. If you're dealing with gardening outside, for example, check if there are any weeds that may be blocking your plant's growth. Weeds can make your plant weaker and more susceptible to disease and insects. So if you do not get rid of the weeds, disease and pest infestations may appear again. Also, take a note of whether there have been any weather changes or changes in the environmental conditions. And last thing to look at, but definitely not the least, check whether the landscape itself has enough things to provide good growth for your plants. For example, an area near the road with strong winds or poor soil will not help your plant to grow quickly and healthy. And the last thing for this video is a little botanist checklist that will help you every time when you want to go over this step by step considering and diagnosing a new plant. What is the species of the plant? What does the healthy plant look like? What are usually the common problems of this plant? Have I changed anything recently in my common plant routine? Which abnormalities can I notice in the plant? Which part of the plant is affected? Are many plants affected or just this one? How quickly did the symptoms progress? Can I see pests or maybe signs of their appearance on the plant? Are there any weeds nearby? and whether the environmental conditions are good for the plant. Thankfully, there are a couple of other sources that also provide useful information for diagnosing the plant problems. With my plant in, you can precisely identify your plant problems with the help of the following things. Invasive weed identification, which provides info about each invasive weed species and the way they spread and harm your plants. Pest identification, which provides information on different types of pests and the traces that they leave. And the last one is disease identification, so that you can identify diseases caused by environmental and abiotic impact. With my plant in, the plant care for beginners becomes way easier. And this is all that I've got for you for today. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Please let us know in the comments. And if there's any other topics that are bothering you, please let us know in the comments as well. Don't forget to like this video and hit the subscribe button and also hit the bell for the notifications. I hope you have a good rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video. This was Maria from Plant and App. Bye!